Hey, what's going on everyone? How you guys doing? Matt Jarbo here with 3 Block Theater. And you know, I have um I have not talked a lot about my trip to Galaxy's Edge over the summer. This has been something I've been sitting on for the the last uh well, about probably 7 months, and I wanted to just talk about the weirdest thing I saw at the park because when you look at the idea of what Galaxy's Edge is, Black Sp uh, Spire Outpost on Batuu, the idea that it's trying to convey, the whole uh, thought about it being uh, a place where the Resistance is trying to hide somewhat in plain sight, the First Order is there trying to sniff them out, and we as Star Wars fans get to be transported to this world where we get to immerse ourselves in a real-life Star Wars experience, and for the most part, it is really cool to just kind of explore and have fun with, even if that does wear off relatively quickly. And I say that because it basically comes across like a mall and it's divided into two parts. So you have one side of it, which is the First Order, and the other side of it, which is the Resistance. And in the middle is the Marketplace, where you've got like the toy shop and the creature stall, and you've got clothing and postcards and all sorts of stuff. Again, it feels like a mall. And I'm not the only one who said that at all. But the thing that caught my attention the most was when I went over to the First Order Cargo Bay, or the Cargo Resupply, that is uh, on the one side, I think the north side when you enter in. And it, what caught my attention was the merchandise contained within. Now, I expected there to be First Order merch, you could buy, you know, t-shirts and mugs and keychains and costumes and all sorts of things if you happen to be a fan of the First Order. But what really caught my eye was, in fact, the 709th logo that was on coffee cups and keychains and t-shirts and hats, and it was all over this store. And I thought to myself that that was a little bit peculiar as I was walking through it and collecting a whole bunch of footage. And I asked my brother, I'm like, hey, have you ever heard of the 709th? And he's all like, no. And I, I kind of paid attention to what other people were in there mulling around and no one in there was, was looking at it as if it was a big thing or not. And I just kind of put it out of my mind at that moment because a few days later I was at San Diego Comic-Con. And as I was walking around with my kid brother at San Diego Comic-Con, I came across the 501st Legions booth. And I thought, oh wait, 501st, 709? Man, that's gotta be something similar. That's gotta be some kind of connected thing right? Because the 501st is so well known amongst Star Wars fans. The 501st is a very large philanthropy based organization where they provide, you know, they're, they're a nonprofit, they're a charity, they do a bunch of charitable work and they're beloved by Star Wars fans the world over. In fact, probably one of the coolest things about the 501st is when they were shooting the last two episodes of The Mandalorian, they needed to get extra uh, stormtroopers and Jon Favreau thought, hey, why don't I call up the 501st? These guys have got accurate, you know, uh, movie accurate costumes, why don't we have them come down and we're going to put the 500 first in an episode of Mandalorian. And they did. And that's awesome. That is the kind of giving back that Star Wars fans love because it shows you that there is a large connection to the outside fan base. So I thought, okay, the 709th has got to be something similar. So I go to the booth. I asked the guy, I said, hey, uh, what do you know about uh, the 700 of the 9th Legion? And the guy looks at me, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, the 709th, man. Like, you know, come on, the 709th, like the, the first order version of the 501st. And he's like, I, I, I don't know what that is. Where, where did you get that from? And I'm like, I was just at Galaxy's Edge and I saw it in, uh, in, in you know, one of the shops there. Whole bunch of 709 merch. And he's like, ah, he, he just looks at me and he lets out this very large sigh and just goes, it's Disney being Disney. Because they get it. The thing with the 501st is, legally speaking, they have to, like, they can't, like, they can't do a lot with, like, the branding in regards to selling it because they are a nonprofit and there are a whole bunch of rights issues that they have to deal with, so on and so forth. And that just makes the most amount of sense given the situation. But Disney is, in and of itself, capitalizing on the 700, the 501st name by having what could be considered 
almost like a new version of it that un like knowing fans may think it's the next like iteration without quite knowing a lot of people know the 501st but they may not know everything that they do so if you go onto the wikipedia for the 709th what you discover is they really only make one appearance in all of star wars canon and that actually is in the galaxy's edge comic book they had five issues that came out before galaxy's edge opened leading people up to the catching them up on the story of Batu and what's going on there with the resistance and the First Order and how the First Order are trying to run a propaganda campaign, which is why they have merchandise there for sale, which is why they're advertising the 709th. But the 709th were kind of like Kylo Ren's personal death squad known as the Red Fury, which is why their banner happens to be red. The, the Red Fury are the elite of the elite. They're not good people. They're not going to be trying to put out propaganda campaigns to win over anyone in Batu, It's just this really weird marketing thing that Disney is doing. And it has been bugging me in the back of my mind since I was there because I was looking up and they've just been in those five issues and a couple other little appearances here and there, but nothing that would be considered main story. They had no part in The Rise of Skywalker, The Last Jedi, or The Force Awakens. They've had no real play in the sequel trilogy outside of those a few comic book appearances, but yet they have merchandise everywhere in the shop. Now, I don't know if anyone buys it. Uh, I saw one person selling one of the banners on Amazon for like 58 bucks, which I thought was kind of funny that they went to they went to galaxy's edge and they bought up this this banner and they're like hey i'll resell it to you if you can't make it there yourself 60 bucks you know um okay fine cool beans if that's how they want to play it. I, but so far no one's bought it it's still on sale but doesn't that seem weird to you i know it seems weird to me that disney would try to capitalize on almost the branding of the 501st by trying to associate it with the 709th. The 501st does make uh, an appearance a few times in the Clone Wars animated show, but they're the good guys, right? We know that if we, we know that the 501st are stormtroopers and they play at the Empire side of things, but they're like, you know, we, we understand that. But without getting any kind of connectivity to the 709th, it just feels like they're trying to sell you something. And we know they are because we this is Disney. The Disney is going to Disney. This is completely where things are. But it's just been one of those situations that I've noticed uh, coming out of this that no one, I haven't seen anyone really talk about. I'm not to say it hasn't been done, but I haven't seen anyone really kind of draw attention to the fact that they're trying to sell merchandise for a, a Stormtrooper Legion in the First Order that is the elite of the elite without any kind of actual like basis for wanting to sell it. There's nothing grounded in the fandom that would make it particularly special. I mean, if you look at let's say the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda that took the internet by storm that has a very large fan base to it and the 709th could potentially have something very similar in regards to having a diehard fan base if they were given any kind of mainstream play which they haven't been and that also further goes back to my uh or further exacerbates the problem that Disney has with Galaxy's Edge as a whole now that we're past the Rise of Skywalker. Because now that the sequel trilogy is over, keep in mind that the 709th were picked by Kylo Ren. They are the elite of the elite. And now that he is gone, and now that the First Order is gone, and now that the sequel trilogy in the Skywalker Saga is gone, there is quite literally nothing that they're going to do right now that is going to still point to that being a good narrative idea for a land like that. Many people, myself included, have stipulated that Disney's going to have almost no choice but to eventually kind of like go back and retroactively fix uh, or change or remodel Galaxy's Edge to be similar to something perhaps like the High Republic, if that gets popular enough. Um, they kind of back themselves into a corner with the First Order and by trying to make it a massive marketing machine like the Empire did. The Empire had, oh, had years of being around in pop culture and people grew attached to it. I don't know anyone that's really attached to the First Order with the exception of one demographic. And that, of course, is kids, right? Kids. I saw a picture on Twitter about a kid uh, at Disneyland. Uh, there was a kid in full 
uh, First Order regalia, uh, full costume, sitting there waiting for the parade he's representing. Uh, we know Ben Affleck's son was a big Kylo Ren fan, and, and Adam Driver hooked Ben Affleck up with a bunch of Kylo Ren stuff in order to make him a hero to his kid. And there are, and in fact, even in this Supply Depot, there was a full-size child's First Order costume that was prominently on display, and it was like, I think like 1200 bucks. You know what I mean? Like it's a movie accurate miniaturized version of a first order stormtrooper meant for kids. So that just tells me that Disney in this particular situation is 100% wanting to push this 709th onto children. Weird. It's just weird to me. But then again, these are just my thoughts on the subject matter. I'm curious to know what you guys have to say about this. Uh, have you been to Galaxy's Edge? Have you seen the 709th? Have you read the comics? Do you know what that's all about? I'm probably gonna be reviewing those four three buck comics when I start getting that off the ground here in the next couple of weeks. And I'm just curious to know your guys' thoughts overall. Let me know down in the comments section. I will talk to you guys later. Do me a solid and type in uh, 709th. If you made it this far in the video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and check back for more future content from me. I'll talk to you guys all later. Have yourself a great day. Thank Thank you again for watching and may the force be with you always.